What do vampires, Jamie Foxx, and Cirque du Soleil have in common? Find out on this episode of Blood and Brews. Today I watched Day Shift, a 2022, what is it, comedy, action, horror movie? It had a runtime of one hour and 54 minutes, and it was rated R, so that's one plus. Mm. Starring Jamie Foxx, Dave Franco, Snoop Dogg, Carla Souza, and Megan Good. In this film, Jamie Foxx plays an undercover, what is it, vampire hunter who, you know, pretends to be a pool guy during the day, and he basically hunts these vampires, not at nighttime, but on the day shift. So he collects their fangs, turns them in for cash, kind of like you would with cans or something. I really liked the idea behind this film, the even the crazy like different types of vampires they had. They had like a spider vampire, they had a uber vampire, an eastern and southern vampire. I forget what the other ones were, but it kind of had a cool backstory that it didn't really go into, which was kind of a letdown cuz it seemed like there was more story there and they cut all the extra bits out and made it just like an action from point A to point B type movie, which is why it felt more like a, what is it? An action movie with vampires in it instead of a vampire movie that had action in it. Um, I wish that it could have had more story character building. You know, it just, again, was more based on all the crazy acrobatics from the Cirque du Soleil people that they had on there, which was kind of cool. But at the same time, I don't want all my vampires doing karate. For me, that's a huge thumbs down. I mean, I don't, I don't want everybody doing karate on screen with vampires. I don't think that that's how it should be. So, on the gore scale, I'm gonna go ahead and say this movie was just bloody. I feel like there was parts that they really could have thrown a lot more gore and guts and blood into it, and they just kinda like tried to do it quick and easy and not really throw a lot of blood around. There was a couple of scenes where blood hits the actual camera lens and you can see it, and I thought that was kinda cool. But overall, not a lot of extra blood, not all that crazy. Especially for all the deaths and killing of vampires in there. I, they could have done way more. So, we're just going to go with bloody on this one, guys. As far as the score out of 10, I think I would probably give this movie a 5 out of 10. I'm not going to plan on watching this movie again. I might throw it on if I'm like drinking with some friends or for background, like a get-together or something, but I'm not gonna probably sit down by myself and watch this again. Still debating on whether I want it to be something that's in my collection, because I collect so many DVDs and stuff, but not sure yet. As far as the comedy aspect of this film, I really thought that if it wasn't for Dave Franco, it wouldn't have been funny, because the rest of the film really felt like it was trying really hard to be funny. And it should have been easy with fucking Snoop Dogg and Jamie Foxx. In my opinion, they're naturally funny actors, so I'm not quite sure what happened there. Dave Franco, in my opinion, kind of saved the movie and kept a good flow to it and added that extra like comedy flair to it. Tonight's beer is... Dead Guy Ale from Rogue. It's um, a Maybach style ale with a robust malt profile and a sweetness that is balanced by the liberal use of bittering hops. It's a 6.8. I wanted something a little lighter today because I'm just getting over being sick and I was actually debating on whether even doing this video or not. So that's why I'm going with this. 
but overall it's pretty good I like it it's easy drinking it's got a good flavor to it it doesn't feel super heavy so I'm gonna go ahead and give this beer a six out of ten thank you for watching this episode of blood and brews trying to keep these short and sweet and just get to the meat of what's going on in these movies to let you know whether it's worth watching or not. Thank you again for watching and have a very good night.